There's joy in the house of the Lord this morning. Come on, let's worship our God together. You know this song. Sing it out with us as we lift up praise to him. Come on, church. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy. Saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross, then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out. We were 
together with me this morning. Let's continue to worship our God. We all got a testimony to share of his faithfulness and his goodness. Come on, church, let's sing this together. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over my name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders and I have resurrection power yes I do still the miracle that I just can't get over my name is registered in heaven oh my praise belongs to you forever testimony from dead to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony Together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, our God will finish what He started. This is my testimony from dead to life. Grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Rerope 
my story, I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. Now I'm Continue to worship this morning, church. The song is called Where I'm Standing Now. Sing it out with me. Out of the wilderness into your deliverance. Look where I'm standing now. And these hands that once were chased and now lifted high in praise. Look where I'm standing. Standing now, and I stand on the chain breaking, miracle making, powerful name of Jesus on the body raising, prodigal saving, powerful name of Jesus. By your mighty hand into the promised land. Look where I'm standing now. You carried the cross for me. Now I am a child of the King. Look where I'm standing now. Look where I'm standing. I was about as far away from God as you could be. But God's grace reached out to me and reached me, changed my heart, changed my life, and now I get to worship Him. It's what I do. And look where I'm standing now. Hallelujah, I'm free. Man, I don't know where you're at, but God can do the same thing for you. God has that same power to change your life, to take you from a path that leads towards destruction and lead you on a path that leads to life and abundance and joy. Hallelujah, I'm free. We're going to sing this together, so I want you to sing it with me, with full belief, with power, because if you've been made free by Jesus, nothing can take you away from that. So let's sing that together this morning, all right, church? Hallelujah, I'm free.
because of Jesus. It's because God of the universe became flesh. And we're reminded of that in this Christmas season, that you would humble yourself, God, God of the universe to becoming human flesh. It's such a hard thing for us to understand and fathom, but that's how much you loved us, that you have that humility. And God, we come humbly before you this morning, just worshiping you, praising you. Thank you so much that we can sing hallelujah, we're free. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, welcome to Compassion Church. My name is Simone, and we hope that you felt welcomed and cared for as you made your way in today. If you're new here, would you please take a moment now to fill out one of these Connect cards, because we want to connect with you and keep you posted of what's coming up and going on here at Compassion. You can drop it off at the tent on the patio on your way out today. Giving is such a joyous part of being the church, and God calls us to be cheerful givers in 2 Corinthians 9-7. We are so thankful for your generosity here at Compassion, and we encourage you to remain faithful in your giving as it allows us to continue our mission of helping people find and follow Jesus. You can give today by dropping your tithes in the offering boxes as you exit today's service. You can text COMPASSIONAZ to the number right here on the screen, or you can simply visit CompassionAZ.org. give Christmas Eve is this Friday, and you don't want to miss it. We have an awesome experience planned for our service and so many activities for you and your family to enjoy. Our services begin at 3.30 and 5 p.m. We cannot wait to celebrate Jesus' birthday with you. As we approach the new year, we need you guys to mark your calendars for our chili cook-off on January 9th. For more information or to sign up, you can head to CompassionAZ.org. We also want to remind you that the Sunday after Christmas, December 26th, we will have no in-person services, but we do have a great online experience planned, so please be sure to join us online. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the final week in our series, Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Are you glad to be here? Can you put your hands together? Merry Christmas. <laughs> Christmas is just days away, and I hope that this year you've been able to have a Merry Christmas instead of a Christmas. We've been trying to help with that. We've had this series, Christmas. We've talked about a few different messes already. Busy mess, and then last week, bitter mess. And this week, yet another mess that can really mess you up this Christmas is selfish mess. And I want to ask everyone to participate in a little bit of a survey here at Compassion Church today. I'd like everyone to be honest just for one moment. And if you are willing to agree that you are a selfish person, would you just raise your hand along with Pastor Myron? And I see all the leave them up, leave them, leave them up. These are all the selfish people at Compassion Church. And, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a little more concerned about the people that didn't raise their hand, right? Maybe we need to ask how many of you are, are uh, prone to tell a lie every now and then. Uh, you know, I, I think all of us understand what it means to be selfish. It's ingrained in us. And if you don't think you're selfish today, a good way to find out would be to ask someone that's close to you. If you know someone and you're close to them, ask the person that knows you best. Uh, this oftentimes could be your spouse, right? And if you don't think you're selfish, Ask your spouse, I dare you, right? Because And get ready. Buckle your seatbelt. Hold on. I did this this week in preparation. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to text my wife, and I'm going to say, hey, um, honey, <laughs> bad idea, right? Honey, do you think I'm a selfish person? And uh, the, the, the text bubble came up pretty fast on my phone. Do you, you know what I'm talking about when you can see their writing? And that bubble just stayed there for like 30 minutes. She was done looking. I'm just, it wasn't that long. But I was shocked and amazed like, oh, wow, uh, this is a lot longer than, <laughs> than what I was expecting, right? And then uh, it was like I, I, I read it and um, uh, I could see it. 
And so I thought it would be cool to share with you some of the response. And, and after a while, I just texted her back, honey, that's enough. I think we're good. I've got, I've got what I need. And so she texted. Here's a few things that, uh, that, I'm, uh, uh, that, that she responded, okay? She, she was playing nice, and I'm not going to give you all of them, okay? All right, there are kids in the building, and, you know, just reasons uh, we're not going to be really specific here this morning. Number one, uh, she says, you come, when you come to bed late at night sometimes and I'm already asleep, that uh, sometimes you don't just slide in the bed, you jump in the bed. And I'm like, what in the world? I'm just glad to be there, right? But, hey, I do. Like, I, I, I get it. That's selfish of me. I should tiptoe. And she's like, don't turn the light on. Maybe I should use a flashlight or something like that to just to, to, to go in unnoticed, right? So uh, that's one area. Uh, another thing she wrote, um, did I get that one? Is that pretty pretty accurate, Julie? Yep, okay. All right. She said, this is crazy, I did this last night. She said, you, when you trim your beard, you leave little hairs for me to clean up all over around this, the, the vanity. And I'm like, ah, oh, she got me there for sure, right? Like, <laughs> Why would I do it when she does it so good? She's awesome, and, and she does better than I do. So, yeah, I get that one. Um, by the way, uh, how, how many of you know that if you, if you were Asking, you know, if you were asking someone that you know the best today, they would be able to give you some feedback on little selfish behaviors that you may have in your own life. Another one was every time we go on a trip, like a road trip, vacation or something, she says, it, you always, even if we're running behind schedule, you stop at Quick Trip just for snacks, not even for fuel. You still stop. And I'm like, yes, that's definitely me. I have to get the, that donut for the road and the big, large Coke, extra large. The, uh, yeah, so that's definitely uh, that's, that's me, number four uh, in a list of 400. Uh, I'll stop at this one. But when she buys something special for uh, like a party or companies coming over or she cooks a dessert. This, this is just so true though. <laughs> like when she wrote, I'm like, Ugh. but but I don't mind it either. I'll be honest, I'll probably do it again. She, uh, she said, I always like to sample it and cut a slice out of the cake. And, and it, one time she had this bunt cake and I did and I, I, I bent the bunt cake back around where you couldn't tell. And, and I'm sure she still caught me, but you couldn't even tell. So I, I, that's kind of selfish, though, right? I should wait for everybody to get some. But then again, everybody got to live a little bit, right? Uh, and then she wrote after the, this essay that she put together that day, she wrote, these are just a few pet peeves. You're really good overall in the area of being selfless. And she put a heart emoji there, so that was good. Yeah, let's give Julie a hand for putting up with me. Thanks, babe. So, man, I, I don't know about you, but selfish behavior is way too natural. And so today we're going to look, as we study the Bible and the Christmas story, I, I want us to get the real meaning of Christmas. And, and obviously it's God sending his son to be our Savior. But do you understand we're talking about the most selfless act in all of human history? The most unselfish thing ever done in all the history of the universe was when God gave his son. So today, as we talk about being selfish, we get a great example of unselfishness in the birth of Jesus Christ. We're going to look at a character, though, in the Christmas story named Herod. He's called Herod the Great, not because he was great, but because his power was great. He had a great realm on this earth. He ruled with an iron fist, and we see an example of extreme selfishness in the life of Herod the Great. Let me give you a little bit of info, backstory about Herod the Great. He was so ruthless that he killed his own family members to maintain power. <laughs> How many of you know that's pretty, pretty selfish, right? To kill your own family members just so you can secure your own throne. He also, in this story, we're looking in Matthew chapter 2 today, he had 
all the children two years old and under put to death because he heard of a king that was going to be born, king of the Jews, Jesus Christ. And he said, you know what? I don't want any other king in my kingdom. I'm going to kill little babies, two and under. We'll have them put to death because I have to be on the throne. Now listen, I know none of you would resort to that type of behavior, that extreme selfishness. But the idea, the message today is who's going to be king of your life? Is it going to be Jesus, the king, or are you going to be like Herod and say, I'm going to live my selfish life my way and I'm going to be king. I'm going to sit on the throne of my heart and do what I want to do. Or will Jesus be crowned king of your life again, fresh and new today? And so we see two polar opposites. There could not be a a better comparison, a more stark contrast between Herod. By the way, another thing Herod did, this is amazing, but when he died, uh, history records this, that Herod the Great had already had people that he commanded to be executed at his death to ensure that there would be no celebration when he died and to ensure that there would be mourning when he died. So he had people, he had it already set up that people would be executed just so that when he died, people would actually cry. So today there's really a stark contrast between Herod the Great and Jesus. God sending his son so selflessly to be our Savior. And today, I'm going to look at four signs of selfishness really quick to get us going that we see in Herod. And unfortunately, all too much we see this in ourselves, right? So the, the first sign of selfishness that we're going to see today is you dominate sovereignly. Maybe you are the type of person that has to have things your way. You like the Burger King slogan, your way, right away, like you can just get everything you want on your burger and you demand everything you want in your life. And you kind of turn a deaf ear when other people have an idea or they want to watch their movie and you're like, ah, you know what? Or you pick the restaurant every time. And, and, and you know how it is, you know, like you're trying to decide what restaurant to go to sometimes if you're on a date. And guys, just a little bit of advice. As soon as you ask what they want to do, just take the first words out of their mouth and go with them. And if they say they don't care, don't believe them, right? If, if they say, I don't want anything for Christmas, look out for that right there. That's a trap. Just a little helpful hint. If you haven't bought your wife a present yet, be sure that you are, are taking care of her. One sign of selfishness is that you dominate sovereignly. It's a my way or the highway mentality. And the truth is there's a little bit of that in all of us. I mean, Herod really portrays that in a magnified way. It's highlighted in Herod, but it's real true in our lives, isn't it? I mean, we all love it our way. We like our our restaurant, our movie choice. We want to watch what we want. I, I heard a guy, he said he was confessing his selfishness. He said, sometimes I come in the room and I turn the channel when my wife is already watching something. And I know that all of us have those tendencies to dominate sovereignly, to be the king. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 We see this guy mentioned, Herod. It says, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Herod the king, he sat on a throne. He did what he wanted to. He reigned and he ruled with an iron fist selfishly. And I just want to warn us from that type of lifestyle where we demand things that, that we want and we say, you know what, I've got to have it my way. Um, if you're always stating your opinion really strong and not listening to the other person, you're acting in a selfish way that's really destructive. You know, um, Selfishness is the number one problem in your relationships. Now, what we're talking about today has a great impact in your daily life. If we could learn to be selfless, we could learn to relate better. 
uh, the number one mo- the most difficult thing, number one, hardest thing in our lives many times, maybe always, is the inability to deny ourselves of instant gratification. Is that not true? That's the struggle of mankind. That's the struggle with the flesh. It's so hard to deny instant gratification. We want what we want, and we want it now. That's a sign of selfishness. Number two, you not only dominate sovereignly, you manipulate strategically. How many of you tend to be manipulative so that you can get your way? Hey, this is at the core of our fallen, depraved state as humans. Our sinful nature says, I'm going to take every situation and try to see what's in it for me. In fact, the slogan, the motto for selfishness is a question, what's in it for me? That's what Herod said when the wise men came. He said, okay, I'm going to try to manipulate this situation. He said, I'm going to trick the wise men into letting me know where Jesus is so I can kill this little king that they're talking about. And he tried very quickly. You see how quickly he turned it to himself. How can I be better from this situation? How can I manipulate the situation? And far too often in life, everything comes down to what's in it for me. You manipulate the situation. You manipulate it strategically. Herod immediately tried to manipulate the situation. He called a meeting with the wise man so he could kill Jesus, he hoped. And I wonder how many of you often are saying when you meet somebody. This happens far too often. You meet someone and you're like, oh, I wonder what I can get out of them. It's a sign of selfishness. It's hard hard not to sometimes because our nature is, what's in it for me? But when we meet a person, how how Christ-like it would be. How much like God's character would it be if we were to say, not what's in it for me, but what can I do for them? How can I serve that person? Not what I can get out of it. Let Let me give you a little secret. When you live like that, that's what real living looks like. When you are giving, when you are looking out for the needs of others, it's so rewarding. I took my boys fishing. We, we go often, as often as we can, playing ball and doing all these activities. And someone asked me to play basketball that night. I said, I've got three boys that are playing ball, and I've got practices tonight with, for them. And so, uh, you know what? I love it, though. I'd rather watch them play and score than me at this point in life, especially, because I wake up the next day, I can't walk if I play. Uh, this is selfish, right? <laughs> but uh, I took, I, I can remember taking them fishing. And I don't know if any of you all have ever taken four boys fishing. I, I, I can't even tell you how many times I had to untangle the lines, right? You, you get it. Uh, and, <laughs> I, you know, I can remember the days when I was going after the big, largemouth bass, right? And, and <laughs> those were like a long, long time ago because n- now when I go... It's, I can't bait the hooks fast, and they can bait their own hooks some, and we're still untangling lines, um, still swimming in the water, getting them, un- what, all that stuff, right? But at the end of the day, when I see them catch the fish, it's rewarding. It's not what's in it for me. I get more reward, and you will, we will always feel better when we are able to say, not what's in it for me, but what can I do for you? Or for that person, when you meet the person. A a third sign of selfishness would be not only do you dominate sovereignly, you manipulate strategically, you agitate socially. You agitate socially. Look at verse 3 of Matthew. How how Herod agitated all of Jerusalem. So Herod was agitated. And check it out. It says, when Herod the king heard this, when he heard about this king, he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. I mean, everybody around him, so all, all the people in his area of, of uh, living, where he lived, they were agitated. The word, the word troubled is used in this, and it means like boiling water is troubled. You put a pot of water under a, or on top of a fire, and you watch that, that calm water that's still start to bubble and boil, and it's troubled, right? That's the same word. I wonder if that's the case in your home when you're selfish. 
Who's being hurt by your selfish decisions? How, this is where we live, right? And I, I'm, I'm, I want to bring attention to, I want to bring tension in your life where you realize that this is a core problem issue in your home that's causing dysfunction. Because when you make selfish decisions, you are saying, I am more important than the whole of my family. I, I want to make this decision, and when you make that decision, whatever it may be, and you neglect the well-being of the people that you love the most. And so that's a sign of selfishness. You agitate socially. You trouble the waters in your home. The people that you love the most are the ones hurt. And all these victims, here's how it happened in Jerusalem in that area, all around where Herod got troubled, he slaughtered all the, this is that context, two years old and down, he killed them all. And all the crying, all the devastation that took place because of one man's selfishness. How many times have we seen that played out, ladies and gentlemen, in the homes across America today? When somebody makes a bad decision and it troubles and it hurts these little kids and it hurts families and it breaks down marriages. So much devastation left in the wake of selfish decisions. And then a fourth sign of selfishness is you operate secretly. You operate secretly. Chapter 2, verse 7 says Herod had a secret meeting. Check it out. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly. Underscore that word secretly. My mom had some good advice for me as a youngster. She said, hey, Myron, anytime you have to sneak to do something, it's probably better not to do it. And she wasn't talking about sneaking around Christmas gifts so my kids don't know what they're going to get for Christmas, right? She's talking about sneaking. And let me say this. Selfish behaviors are often done in the dark secretly, and this is what Herod was doing. He's like, I'm going to secretly do this. He called a secret meeting. I just want to encourage everybody today to stay away from secret behaviors that destroy your home, your life, have negative impact, and so you operate secretly. Secret addictions stem from selfishness. Now that we've seen and identified selfishness, Let's try to eliminate it. So I'm going to give you three steps to stopping selfishness. Three steps. And the first way that we stop selfishness is to start engaging and serving and being helpful. Engage in serving and be helpful. And contrasted with Herod ultimately is Jesus. He came as a servant to help us. Secondarily, in this passage, we see the wise men serving. I love what it says, they came from the east. In verse 1, it says the wise men came from the east. And we know that song. We've sung the words many times. I won't sing it, man. I almost, I almost did. And Julie was like, she was tensing up big time right then. I don't blame her. It's bad when I sing. We three kings... Of Orion R, we three kings, we travel so far. They did that for God. They traveled a long way to serve God selflessly. When they did that, they said to their little kids, hey, I'll see you in several months, maybe years, apparently. I have service to do for the king, for God. I want to encourage you this Christmas season to get a hold of the selfish behavior that plagues us. I want to help you. I want to help you have a joyful Christmas. And the joy is not in getting, it's in serving. You'll get so much joy when you take time to sacrifice what you would normally enjoy to do something for someone else. That's what they did. We don't realize, but they went a long way. They traveled across a barren desert on a camel. They had a long journey. They sacrificed time with their family. Every time you show up to serve on Sunday at Compassion or serve in your community or in your neighborhood, you are doing like the wise men. You are acting actually ultimately like God who came as a servant to meet our needs. 
And that's when living really kicks in. That's when true joy happens in our lives. So this Christmas, man, go find something to do for somebody else. A great idea would be to sign up to serve at Christmas Eve at Compassion. It's an easy thing. You just go back to the back and say, hey, Pastor Myron, I'd like to serve on Sunday or on Friday. It's Christmas Eve. And I'll, I, I'd like to do something for Jesus. Man, I'll sign you up on the spot. And I guarantee you, uh, you'll be happy that you chose to serve. One way to stop selfishness is to engage in serving and be helpful. Uh, when we're selfish and we indulge in selfish desires, how many of you know you end up feeling empty, not satisfied? How many times have you gone and you got exactly what you wanted at the restaurant and you ate it and at the end of it you're like, okay. Or you indulged in something. You bought something that you wanted for Christmas and then three days later you're already done with what you got. That's our nature. But when we, instead of self-indulging, we sacrifice to serve, man. I want to encourage you to, to serve Check this out, especially if it causes you to sacrifice. Number one, to stop selfishness, engage in serving, and be helpful. Number two, enjoy giving and be happy. So not only should we engage in serving and be helpful, we should enjoy giving and be happy. Uh, the wise men gave gifts, right? They were givers. Ultimately, during Christmas, we're, we're understanding the good news that God gave. So God is our greatest example. And at, at Christmas, it's a great time to give because we're celebrating the greatest gift of all, right? God gave his son, his prize. God gave his very best. And then the wise men, they, they teach us to give in this passage. They're saying, hey, we're going to give gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They gave very costly, they gave their gold. How many of you know, I mean, that gold's viable. When we give our money to God, like the Christmas offering at Compassion, it's a great way to give. You can go to the website, click on that tab, and you can give in the Christmas offering. Give a special gift this time of year for God so we can reach young children. We can partner together to be a blessing like we were yesterday in Mexico. Let me give you some, some pictures. I showed these pictures to my sons. I wanted, I wanted them to know this is what our church does. This is what we're able to do because people partner together. Look at that little kid getting a Christmas gift because Compassion said, we'll help out. I'm excited about that. How many of you want to do more of that? I love it when we're able to be givers like God. We're acting like God. And we're making a difference. This little kid with the football, I love this because I love football. I see little uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers right there or something like, man, I just love this kid with the football. He's happy. You do you understand everybody in this room, all of us as Compassion Church partnered together to be givers and we made a difference in this little kid's life. I think that's awesome. It should bring floods of joy to your soul today to know that we all partnered together so this could happen. Look at the little girl. How many of you think that's pretty? Can we praise God for the compassion that went out to Mexico to an orphanage? Little kids that needed hope, needed some love. Man, that's awesome right there. The truth is, when we act like God and we act like the wise men, we, we, it brings us joy. Can you see? I can, I can just see it's like a touchdown celebration dance for the wise men. When they laid their, the, I mean, they were doing the gritty. Is that what it's called, Evan? They, they were doing some special dance like, like you see on TikTok or something, celebrating their big-time opportunity to lay gold, frankincense, and myrrh down before Jesus. And, it, they, I mean, they weren't like, oh, here we go. i got to give this to God. In fact, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. I've got that verse in, in the presentation for us, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. God loves a cheerful giver. The last part of this verse, for God loves a cheerful giver. And I can just see them jumping up and down. Hey, we made it. Look what we could do. We gave gifts to God. And they got excited about it. High-fiving celebration. And that's the type of feeling that we get when we are able to give back to God. 
So number one, engage in serving. Number two, enjoy giving. Number three, energized by worshiping. Energized by worshiping and be healthy. Energized because we get depleted and we feel selfish in those moments when we're unhealthy in our soul. When we're running on empty and we don't spend time with God, our focus is on ourselves. But when we get in the presence of God, by the way, two verses in Matthew chapter 2, verse 2 and verse 11, use this word worship. That's what the wise men did when they fell down before Jesus, laid their gifts down. They were worshiping. And when we worship, we realize who the real king is, don't we? We dethrone ourselves momentarily in the presence of God. When we fall before him, we dethrone ourselves and we put God in his proper place in our hearts. And we say, King Jesus, you're number one. That is a healthy state to be in. And I want to encourage us to take moments like the wise men did this Christmas season and bow in your hearts before God. It takes the focus off ourselves, right? When, we, when you worship, you center on God, not self. And we live in a world that's bombarding us with commercials and ads, right, that make us think about our own needs. But God says, hey, I want you to take the focus off yourself. And when we do this, we worship. Uh, worship is the best reminder that you're not the king. Remember, Herod, he wanted to be the king. He would kill anybody that got in his way. And we need reminders today that we are not the king of our lives. And the best reminder is when we worship the true king of kings and lord of lords. And in worship, when we come collectively together, that helps. And when we worship in our quiet time and we praise God and we thank him. Well, worship, worship does two things. Um, does many more, but we'll list two today. Worship, it, it gives God the praise he deserves, right? That's part of worship, giving God praise. He deserves it. But not only does worship give praise to God that he deserves, check this out. It gives us the perspective that we need. It, it reframes our focus on what, rather, who is really important. And today, I just want to encourage you to take a moment right now and worship God. When, when we enter into his presence and we fall before him and we praise him, we are saying, I'm not going to live for myself. I'm going to live for King Jesus. I'm not going to try to be the king of my life like Herod did. I'm going to try to be letting God be the king as I serve, as I give, and as I worship then you'll be able to stop this thing called selfishness or at least put the brakes on it. Worship is soul care. Yes, worship is for God. It's all about him. But here's what happens. When you fall before God and you start being grateful, thankful, that is the healthiest emotion that you could have, gratitude for what God has done. And when you fall before him, your soul begins to get healthy. Let me tell you who is selfish. People are selfish when they are running on empty, when they're unhealthy in their own soul. They're not going to be looking out for the needs of others, right? But when we fill up with God in worship in our quiet time with God at home, and we have this energizing time at the the throne of the king of kings. We have a healthy soul. We, we're able to give at that point. It's hard to be selfless when we're on empty, but when we're energized and refueled with God's presence, then we're ready to go act like the wise men and bring our gifts to Jesus and to serve others. And I want to encourage us today to remember to take time to worship. And I think it would be really awesome right now that we could, as a family of God together, refocus our attention on God. Be refueled 
energized through worship. And so now in these moments, maybe you would like to say, you know what? God, I have a problem like everybody with selfishness. And I don't want this selfish mess to mess things up in the people's lives that I care about the most. Help me to make selfless decisions. Three ways. Serve, give, and worship. Would you pray with me right now? I want everybody across this building right now and everyone tuning in online just to take a moment to say, God, thank you for giving your own son. We worship you, Father, from the bottom of our heart, from our soul. We praise you. Our focus right now in this moment is not on ourselves. Our focus right now is on the generous, loving, kind God that gave his only son. It sounds too too good to be true, Father. But right now we pause and we praise you. We energize in your presence and our hearts have health. As we speak praises to you that you deserve. All across this building today, it's certainly appropriate for all of us to say, God, thank you for sending your son. How lost we would be. Would you just praise God that the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross is what paid for our sins. All the things that we're ashamed of from the past that we don't want anybody to find out about those things. God came to be with us, to die for us, to serve us, to give. God gave. And today we worship him for what he did. Can I ask everybody in the room today just to sit in that? Maybe you'd like to, along with me, maybe right now if you feel if you feel comfortable doing this, maybe you'd like to lift a hand of praise up to God as you're sitting there. Let's slow it down this Christmas. we got time to sit in this. We don't want busy mess. We're not holding on to bitter mess. Forget the selfish mess. God, we praise you. We lift up holy hands today. Holy not in our own works, but in your righteousness. And we lift up praise to Jesus, our King we make you king of our lives afresh and new today. You are worthy. You are holy. You are good and righteous and pure and just and wonderful in all your ways. Thank you, God, for giving your only son, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us. We praise you, God. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for re-energizing us, reviving our hearts as we worship. Man, I love this. I love it when we worship together. I, I also want to say that maybe today you realize God gave his son for you. He died for you. And you say, man, I'm ready to turn from my selfish life. I don't want to be king of my life anymore. I want Jesus to be the king of my life. He, he can be king of your life today. He won't take it by force, but if you give him that, he will become your king today. He'll be your savior, forgive you of your sins, give you a new life, eternal life. And if today you would like to make Jesus the king of your life, would you pray this prayer? You say, I believe in Jesus, and I'm ready to give him my life. I know he died for me and rose. Would you pray this prayer? I'll I'll say a phrase and you can repeat it heartfelt straight to heaven. Would you say this? Say, dear God, please forgive me for my selfish mess, for all of my sin. Forgive me. I want you to be my king. I want to live for you. I want to serve you. I want to give for you. And God, please save my soul. 
thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for giving me new life. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Hey, I, I just want to say our God is so good. It's been so good to sit in his presence today along with you. And I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, man. And it's, it just got a little merrier in these moments. And I, I want to say all of you who maybe said yes to Jesus today, you prayed that prayer. And I want you to take the I said yes to Jesus card out and put that in. Uh, I actually take it out to the connect tent and uh, we would love to hear about your newfound faith just take that out fill it out really quick and we we just want to be able to help you and if you're online and you said yes to Jesus then today you could text the word follow to the number on the screen and we praise God for your newfound faith and I think we've got some guests that are coming over today some a few little kiddos that are going to come and sing a song for us and we're going to make them feel welcome as, uh, as the, the kids come in and we welcome them just a moment, they're coming on in. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I, I want to remind you about these invite cards. Everybody grab an invite card, if you will. should be in your seat. It's got a candy cane attached to it. Don't eat it yourself. Don't be selfish, right? We just talked about that. But we want to sweeten up the invite culture here at Compassion and make it easy for you to extend an invitation. So don't eat the candy cane. I know some of you are already eyeing it and you're thinking, I need that. But right now, it would be great. Look at all these kids coming. Let's give them a hand right now as they're coming in. Don't they look awesome? Man, we love our kids. Yeah. Don't they look great up here? Man, we love the, you, you know, Compassion. We've got the greatest kids in all the world at Compassion Church. And uh, Hey, as they're coming, making their way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, take these invite cards with you. You can bring someone uh, to Christmas at Compassion. It's uh, this Friday, Christmas Eve. Amazing. And, and check this out. Do you know at Christmas, uh, people will actually come to church that normally don't? It's one of the greatest times of the year to serve uh, as, uh, as you give an invitation to church. Uh, people will actually come when they normally wouldn't come to church. And uh, let's give it up for these kids one more time as they're ready to sing for us.
Awesome. We're going to have the kids kind of move off the stage now. And uh, thank you guys. That was so cute, was it not? Man, what cute kids. Let's give another round of applause for them. Man, and as they wake, make their way back over for all you parents, as they make their way over to be picked up, I'm just going to talk to you for just a minute, and then we'll let you get out of here. Um, but first and foremost, I just want to say we are all about connection here at Compassion Church because in a time and age where it's never been easier to connect with people, a lot of people feel disconnected. And our heart and our goal is to connect you to God and to connect you to community. And so we'd love for you to fill out a connect card if you, um, if you wouldn't mind just taking just a moment um, and fill that connect card out. We want to make a connection with you because you need community. You need people to do life with. But more than anything, you need to connect with God, and we want to help you do that. That's our mission here at Compassion Church. So if you are newer, we'd love for you to fill that out so we can stay connected with you. Secondly, um, our Serve One, Sit One is going to be going on, and Pastor Myron is going to be in the back of the auditorium, and he would love to have you serve one of our Christmas Eve services. That's an opportunity for you to be a part of our Christmas Eve service where you can serve at one, and no matter what you're skilled with, no matter what um, your skill set is, we have something for you to do, and we'd love for you to be able to serve one and sit one with your family. We have a 3.30 and a 5 p.m. Christmas Eve service. That is this Friday, so please come out. It is going to be such a special and powerful night. There's going to be powerful worship, a powerful message, and an amazing uh, kids moment. There's just going to be an awesome, awesome time with so many things for you and your family to enjoy. And then I do just really quickly, for all you ladies, we are going to be having a she night on uh, January 13th. And that is always such an awesome time. It's always so powerful. Um, and I know so many women, uh, along with my wife, who have been so impacted by these she nights that we have. So ladies, if you are interested in that, you can go to our website and look up events and get all the information you need there. And I believe register for it. Um, and we would love for you to be able to come and enjoy that with us as well. The last thing I want to say is I will be right up here in the front. I'd love to pray for you. If you need prayer, um, we care because God cares. God cares about what you're going through. He cares about what you're dealing with. And uh, our heart here is to help you and to pray for you. And so if you need prayer, please feel free to come down to the front. I'm going to be standing right here. I'd love to pray with you. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. And make sure you come to Christmas Eve. Invite someone. Tell everyone, bring someone. God bless. Have a great Sunday.